Ahoy! 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 Magadi, magadi. Magadi, oh, come on, Zoro, what's up? Right. Um, I have a few issues that uh, I would want to share with you. The first and foremost issue is that uh, the government of Zimbabwe is not willing to reform. As the government of Zimbabwe refuses to reform, it has adopted a number of controversial government policies, one of which is violence. They have adopted the violence as a means to remain in power. The government of Zimbabwe has rejected the mandate to willfully govern its citizens and to account to its citizens. It has gradually drifted from the ethics and the normal the procedures of governing a state, a normal state. Because it is a predatory a government, it has survived out of intimidation, torture, abductions and murders. If you look at the history of Zimbabwe, there, is, there was never a time when peace was enjoyed. During the colonial era, people were killed. In 1980, soon after attaining independence, one and a half years down the line, the government of Zimbabwe went down to Midlands and Matebeleland and unleashed terror and genocide. During the period of between 1982 to 1986, the government of Zimbabwe murdered its own citizens to about 20,000 people that were either unaccounted or accounted but being dead. Four years, four years down the line, the government of Zimbabwe brought in a controversial a, a violent policy which saw all citizens intimidated to or forced or coerced to either like Mugabe or you don't like Mugabe, you die. These uh, discussions of violence are not only limited to a period of 10 years after independence. In 2000, in 2000, the same government, because it had failed to account for its land, one of which reason it went to war, it unleashed terror and violence on its citizens in Zimbabwe. This time round, they pretended as if white Zimbabweans were not Zimbabweans. They said we are fighting whites and they removed the word Zimbabwe. And when these violent activities were done, Zimbabwe enjoyed a period of forcing its citizens to like it, whether, whether you had an allegiance to it or not. When we talk of violence in Zimbabwe, we are on, not only talking of violence against its own citizens. It has also extended a hand in killing foreigners. Something that must be condemned. We, we call upon the United Nations to exclude and remove Zimbabwe on matters that involve governance on matters that involve peace. We now wonder why the United Nations is sending peace troopers, is sending peace missions out of Zimbabwe to other countries. We have people who are maintaining peace in Liberia, Cote d'Ivoire, South Sudan, Jafar. Why is United Nations allowing a predatory government that has not observed all regulations of the United Nations Charter to maintain peace. It is as good as sending a serial rapist to look after someone's children. The United Nations is exporting violence from Zimbabwe to other nations. We are calling upon the United Nations to harness the uh, chapter 9, 8 and 13 of the United uh, Charter, which presupposes all nations to abide by the law uh, by the international laws and the laws governing their constitutionalism. As we gather here today, 
at Zimbabwe House. The Zimbabwe House in London is possibly a clean house, maybe half clean. But the, but the, Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwe House that represents a government of Zimbabwe in Harare, which is the headquarters of the ruling party, has been turned into a torture house. Just two months ago, hundreds of people were brutalized inside the headquarters of ZANU-PF. And the government of Zimbabwe has said nothing about it. The president has said nothing about it. And I'm sure the ambassador of, uh, of uh, Zimbabwe in London didn't say anything about it. What we are calling upon citizens of the world is to appreciate that peace overrides everything. And if we adopt peace, we will not endure what we are going through. Let us go down. In 2005, the government of Zimbabwe unleashed Operation Murambatina and it destroyed homes of people, the people that they settled on those pieces of land. As if that was not enough, in 2008, the government of Zimbabwe made that over 300 people in cold blood because President Robert Mugabe wanted to cling on to power. As Zimbabweans, we call upon all Zimbabweans to unite across political divide. We call upon Zimbabweans and citizens of the world to rally behind suffering Zimbabweans so that their plight can be elevated and amplified to the world so, so that we can gain the magnitude of respect that we so wish. Let us talk about the nation of Zimbabwe today. Zimbabwe is in a comatose. The economy is not functioning. Yes. All systems of the economy and pillars of the economy have crumbled to the ground. As we are confronted with this challenge of a comatose economy, over 4.2 million Zimbabweans face, uh, face starvation. Yes. They face starvation not because Zimbabwe is not capable of looking after its people. They are facing starvation because, number one, the government of Zimbabwe has created failed policies that see Zimbabweans in the state that they are today. As I speak in London today, I need to call upon critical uh, uh, governments to participate in ensuring that Zimbabweans are free. One of the most critical governments is the British government. We have seen that the British government, time immemorial, since 1980, they have been supporting President Robert Mugabe financially, emotionally, and morally. Today, we should mark the beginning of questioning the British government and asking what they are doing in trying to bring order in, in, in Zimbabwe. Of late, we heard that the ambassador of Britain in, in Harare had a soft touch on Zanupir. That is unethical. Why would people have a soft touch on individuals that have seen murder as a means of survival, that have murdered so many people and questioned, that have power to kill and challenge I see the current government of Britain, the current British government, is mourning and whinging over immigrants from Zimbabwe. They are refusing to grant asylum to immigrants from Zimbabwe. But the, the one best question is, what are you doing as Britain to ensure that you normalize Zimbabwe and all these Zimbabweans go back to Zimbabwe? I am sure if Zimbabwe is being run in a normal way, a few Zimbabweans will remain in, in the United Kingdom. Yes. Yes. Home is always best. Yes. I am a trained teacher. I'm, I'm qualified to teach in England and Wales. Qualified with teacher test status in the UK. But I chose to go back to suffer on the trenches because home is best. Despite the luxuries that I enjoy in the United Kingdom, I would never enjoy them full-fledged. 
because United Kingdom is not my home. My home is Zimbabwe. Yes. This is the same reason why we are saying the British government must take very steady measures to ensure that the dictator Robert Mugabe does not continue to survive and reign and, 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 and kill the, its own people and ruin the economy. The British government has all the resources to try the resources that can see Zimbabwe brought to normal. Yes. Why the something now? Not to solve the diplomacy. And, and this should be brought even in the House of Commons, in the House of Lords. It should also be brought onto the EU Parliament so that this can be discussed uh, 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 professionally and legally. Now, Zimbabwe being in a comatose no longer has any currency to use. We are now using the United States dollar as our local currency. But what have they done? Because all nostro accounts of the country are dry and they have stolen all the money for their personal use. They are about to bring a useless paper and they branded it a bond note. As they talk of the bond note, they have put a bond note one to one with the United States dollar, which is a crime. It's ridiculous. Which is a crime. How would you just pick a, a bond paper, they print out money, and equate it to US dollar, which was pegged against its gold in the United States? And you are picking a piece of paper from the bin and put, a, put someone's face and call that money. Tissue. We are saying, Zimbabwe, let us unite against these injustices. Today, let us focus on a number. Let us focus on, on a number of issues. Number one, we need to fight injustices in Zimbabwe. Yes. yes. Not, not from our political small ideologies. We must fight the injustices yes. as a united front of a social movement. Yes. 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 Wash away politics or political.